Hello everybody and welcome to the art of storytelling. What we're doing is laying the groundwork uh, to kind of show uh, where we're starting and where we're going to be heading. So I wanted to just kind of take a moment and talk about books. You know, as uh, I've said before, I love books. I've been working on books for a very long time, making all of my own books. Uh, some of the books I've made, this is just one, um, I'm just kind of go through and there's all sorts of stuff in here you know uh, it's just kind of collecting uh, a little bit of stuff that I had done it's just kind of fun and interesting and simple you know it's just it's sewn together you can see it right there get that back into a focus uh, that's kind of more traditional it's just collecting up some stuff and putting it all together um, what we got here is something uh, it's kind of traditional, but kind of not. It's something that sits on your wall, and you can kind of flip through it. Uh, really, really nice piece there. Uh, just a little handmade book. Uh, this is another handmade book. This is The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. And uh, see, it opens up there, and uh, the book and the pages are all in here, and the story and stuff. It's all inside there. Really, really cool piece. Yeah, not very uh, traditional, very non-traditional, but what we're going to do is we're just going to start with basics. We're going to do something traditional. And I was looking through some of my sketchbooks and different things that I've made, and I don't really have any traditional ones to show except for just this, this is just kind of a sketchbook that I did out of copy paper. And you can see it's sewn there on the edge, and it's just, just regular old paper. All right, so we're going to be doing something kind of like this, where it's just pages and it's sewn together. The one thing that I'm wanting to do though with this is I don't want it to be real tight sewn together here on the edge. I want it to be loose so when I'm actually done with all the pages, it can lay flat. You know, because we're going to be using real nice, uh, well, kind of nice art paper. So this is basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making a book like this. Alright, a little bit more about making books. Um, it's something that I've really been excited about doing probably since uh, high school. I don't know why, but for some reason I've always liked this idea of making books. You know, handmade books just kind of have this thing where it's like, it feels real, it's right in front of you, and it's how books were made for thousands of years before the printing press came along. Books were handmade, they were uh, duplicated, you know, by scribes, you know, traditionally in the Catholic Church, you know, they'd have whole rooms of, of scribes that would be copying down the Bible and, and different stuff like that. Uh, but then there's stuff before that, you know, you got uh, clay tablets, the cuneiform clay tablets, ancient civilizations, uh, you got the Egyptian uh, pap papyrus books that were kind of rolled up and written and illustrated. I mean, they were really, really nicely painted and stuff. Dead Sea Scrolls, that was one. I, I, it just kind of blanked on me. Um, we found those uh, in in uh, caves and stuff all rolled up and, uh, and we've been able to say, okay, here's stuff that was written 2,000 years ago and it's almost exactly like uh, what we got in the Bible today. So that's really, really cool. So books have been with us for a long time. It's something that has uh, just fascinated me for a very long time, like I said, since uh, high school. Um, and uh, I just thought it'd be cool to kind of show you exactly how I do this process. So let's get started. All right, so making a book has got to start somewhere. And uh, the place you really want to start with is the materials that you're going to be using. Uh, with this book that we're going to be working on, I just got some paper. Some cheap, uh, good paper. It's good paper, but it's cheap. And a lot of times you can go to the art stores and they'll actually have paper that's uh, on discount. You know, I went to Jerry's Artorama and there's a you know, a bunch of really nice art stores across the country you can go to. But usually in any of these art stores, you'll have 
a place like down a center aisle or off to the side where they had discount stuff. And what I got was some paper that it's a hot press paper, but it's kind of got a little deckled pattern in it, kind of like a Canton paper, something like that. It's not a traditional uh, texture that you would get from a high-end watercolor paper, but it's still got a little bit of a tooth to it. So I saw it there, they had piles of it, and I just like grabbed a bunch, it was like a buck, like a buck ten, buck twenty a, a piece, and it was like twenty-two by, by thirty, I believe. And what we're doing right here is I'm just cutting it into sections, and I think we ended up with, uh, with six pieces per page. So, you know, sitting here, I'm, I'm scoring it. What I'm doing right here is I'm actually scoring the paper and then I'm tearing it. And what that allows me to do is to have that nice deckled edge on the paper that looks like a traditional uh, piece of paper that's been handmade. And I just thought that looks really cool, you know. We'll, we'll end up with some straight edge pieces, but we'll probably use that inside the binding when I actually go to start choosing all the pieces of paper. You'll see where I actually choose those flat edges to be the inside of the paper where we're going to be binding it. But, again, you can just go to any old art store and find some cheap paper that you can do some work on. But you need to be cognizant of what type of work you're going to be doing on it. You don't want to be doing fine detailed drawing on a piece of paper that's got a lot of tooth and you can't do a lot of fine detailed drawing. On this, I couldn't really do too much detail, but I wasn't really looking for detail because what I wanted is something that would hold um, multimedia. You know, like I'm going to be gluing stuff down, I'm going to be pasting, I'm going to be painting, so it needed to be kind of thick and and be able to take a little bit of abuse. And most of the stuff that I work on in sketchbooks, it's got to be able to take a, uh, abuse because that's just the way that I do things. You know, it's like I'm, I'm in there, I'm beating on it, I'm ripping on it, I'm cutting into it, I'm sewing stuff back together. So that's exactly what we're doing here. And I'm showing the paper to you. It's got that nice deckled edge. And I was pretty happy with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're doing here is I'm taking a red oxide paint, just old tube of paint that I probably got for like a buck or two. And I'm just squeezing it into a big five gallon bucket of water. And what I decided to do was take half of the paper, you know, I got 52, ended up with 52 pages, so it's about half of that, so 26, 26 pages. So I'm going to take half of those 26 pages, which is 13, 13 pieces of paper, and I'm going to just submerge it into this bucket of water. And what I've done is I, I just sell me, I just squeezed a bunch into it and just stirred it up a little bit with a paintbrush and I'm just going to dump that paper right down into there and this is why you got to have if you're going to do something like this you got to have some strong paper some thick paper that's actually going to be able to take this abuse so I took the paper and I'm just dump dunking it down in there and I'm just wanting to kind of stain the paper and again I'm only doing this with half of the paper and uh, you'll see why here in a little bit when we get to that actual video, to that part of the video. But there's all different types of stuff you can do. One really good way to stain paper is with tea, tea bags. Uh, you get you a few tea bags, you know, like a, a dark uh, black tea. Or you can take like fruity teas that have different types of purples and reds that are kind of in the tea. And uh, you can make it that way. But... I mean, just use your imagination right here as, like, to what you want to do. Uh, I just had some uh, tube of paint that was probably going bad on me. I probably had it for, like, 20 years. So I was just like, I'll just use this paint, you know, just old whatever. And I like the, the red-brown, you know, it's kind of an earthy type tone. The red oxide, that's the whole point, red oxide. It comes from an actual oxide, uh, a rock that you can actually get in nature, that's where the color comes from. So it's a, a definitely an earthy tone. 
So that's what I'm doing right here is I'm just submerging the paper in there and I'm trying to get it in between each page. That's what I'm doing right here is I'm just separating it, trying to get the water in between each page. <clears throat> Most of these videos that we'll be doing are very laid back where I'm just kind of sitting here talking you through the process. This will actually be the only one where I pre-recorded it and I'm talking over it. Most of, almost everything that we're going to be doing, I'm going to be talking while I do it. So uh, this is just in the bottom, that we're in the top right now of the, of the studio. That's uh, the bottom floor where I'm at right here working on this. And I got a little bit more of that red oxide. And I pulled all the paper out because it's all wet. And I'm just, uh, you know, putting some paint down on it and throwing it back in the bucket. And I'm just getting some movement. And it doesn't matter where you do it, just kind of throw it in. And here's another thing you should notice about what I got. See that paintbrush I got right there? That is the junkiest, cheapest paintbrush you can get. They're at Lowe's, just like the Lowe's bucket there. And you can... Um, get them for I think like a buck a piece maybe even cheaper I can't remember what their actual price is but all I'm doing is uh, I got that mica board that I'm uh, it's just a big piece of mica and uh, I'm just plopping paint down on it see I got the water from the bucket mixing it in there I'm not sure why I was turning around to look I might have been looking for water and then I realized I had a big bucket of water right in front of me you know, so I can mix it with the paint a little bit more. But this right here, doing this process, should be the fun, the most fun you have with making this book. It's like, just get in there, get dirty, slosh stuff around, um, just have fun with it. Now, of course, you can start from a pristine, nice piece of paper, if you like. But myself, I feel like it actually adds to uh, the overall book if you stain the paper first or you do something to all of the paper first uh, before you get started. It, it just makes everything uniform. It gives you a nice starting point. And then you also, you don't have to worry about making that first mark on the paper because it's already been done, right? I mean, it's you're just messing up every piece. It's just like this book that I showed earlier it's like every piece in here this one's done kind of the same way and it's just a mess you know and this was what I did is I just took a bunch of old drawings and paintings that didn't work out and I just tore them up and made them into a book and I soaked them in a bucket just like what we're doing right here um, when I did this one though the paint was a lot more intense and it, what we're going to end up here coming out of this bucket is a little lighter. It's not as uh, intense as uh, what I got right here. I just showed you on this one. But one thing I do notice that I'm doing, I, I have to probably go back and redo this, is all that, all that stuff right there. I only did it on one side. I don't know why I did it on one side. But it looks like I'm going back in it now and... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to hit up some of the other pages and just kind of work it back into it, I guess, just for fun. All right. It's like, see, I'm hitting the back side of the paper now. I realized that I'm like, why did I only do one side of the paper? <laughs> I was like, what was I thinking? So anyway, I'm just going in there. I'm putting some more in, blah, 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 you know, just big bucket and uh, just having fun with it. You know, that's, that's. If you take one thing away from all of this that I'm going to be showing you is uh, have fun because uh, doing sketchbooks and basically this is what I'm doing right here. I'm doing handmade books slash sketchbooks right here, but we're actually putting a story to it and I'll explain that a little bit more as we, uh, as we get into some of the later ones once we actually sit down at the table and start doing the artwork on the pages. But I just want to show you that this part of the whole process should be the most fun you have. And here I am wringing it out. Look at that. I just kind of wrinkle it up. <laughs> and wring the paper out. Flip it upside down. Put the other end back in. I mean, you know, 
just have fun with it. You're distressing the paper. Uh, so, it, I mean, you can do no wrong to it, really. Even if you were to tear it up and rip it up, you can always go back and uh, sew it back together, you know, the paper, or you can uh, tape it back together. You can do whatever you want. So don't be afraid to just have at it and do whatever seems neat. I, I know I did a book years ago where I did something like this, and then I buried it underground for a few months, and then I went back and I... Uh, you know, I dug it up, and some of the stuff that was on there was really cool. And I had done it in Florida where, you know, it rains like every day. So the rain definitely helped out with, uh, you know, me burying it. Um, so, and I think what I'm doing right here is I'm just using up the rest of the paint that I, I squirted out onto the table there. So, that's, that's what it seems like I'm doing. I'm just using up all of that extra paint. And don't let things go to waste, you know, just add it to it. Also, uh, if y'all like, go ahead and ask some questions on these videos. Um, I'll definitely answer everything I can. <clears throat> there we go. Now, <laughs> we're in the yard outside the studio, and I got my bucket of paper, and it's kind of a windy day, so I uh, might be hearing a little bit of wind in the background, but I'm just laying it out in the yard, you know, I'm just going to put it out there, and I'm going to let it uh, get dry, and again, I'm only doing this to half of the pages. And you'll see what we'll do to the other half here in a minute. And it's just kind of working them all back together. But what I was doing is I wanted to kind of dunk some in water, see what those looked like, and then do some another way, which I'll be showing you here in a minute, um, and just see what ended up looking the best, in my opinion. So we'll get to that here in a second. But, yeah, I mean, this is how you do it. Just take your paper and uh, lay it out in the yard, you know. Don't be afraid to do whatever, you know. I mean, there's a lot of sun outside, so just put it outside. And the funny thing is, I'm actually doing this late in the day. Um, I probably should have put it out a little earlier. Plus, it's cold. I know it don't look cold because I'm in shorts, but it was cold when I was doing this. It was really cold. I got the hoodie on. And here you go. Uh, yeah, just use up the rest of the bucket of, of water. And you want to use up all that paint. So there you go. Use it up. Don't be afraid to experiment with things. There you go. There's 13 pages of distressed paper just laying out in the uh, out in the yard drying. And something that you'll see later on is that, and you'll see it right here is that you'll end up with a bunch of uh, grass and stuff stuck to the paper, which is fine. You know, it just adds to it. Just uh, adding a little bit more into it. And right here, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take the pages from the yard, and I'm going to add the pages that I didn't do anything to, and uh, throw those into the mix as well. And this one, for some reason, I just put paint over the whole dang thing. Uh, got me a spray bottle of water. Um, using water to spray is, um, it'll help you out. You know, you can get some good texture just spraying water down. And see, here I am actually adding the, uh, the, um, on you know the ones that I didn't do anything to them I'm adding those to the pile and I'm just making a giant pile of, of paper right now and I'm just moving stuff over here and I'm putting them all disheveled different angles and I'm just gonna start plopping one clean and one distressed right on top of each other so that's what I'm doing right now see there you go add a little bit more and all this is on that mica uh, board. I find those really cheap and easy to work on. Uh, I, I really enjoy them. 
And you can see some of those dots where it just kind of got some splatter in there and it dried up on the paper. So that's, that's good stuff. That's good texture for later. And I'm just going to start putting the, these papers all over the place, you know. Just be like, okay, I'm doing a little something here. Add a little bit of water. And what this is going to do is I'm putting the pages together so they're actually going to transfer you know the color from the different pages onto one another and plus I'm adding a little bit more doing stuff and I'm trying to remember I, I think I think I ended up liking just doing the dry and not soaking I, I didn't use enough paint when doing the soaking but I, I still got some really cool stuff but I probably could have done it just, just doing this process right here. Um, but what I really needed to do is add more paint to my bucket. Uh, and here's another thing you can do. You don't have to use fine art paper. You know, I'm, uh, by the way, I'm just sitting here spritzing some stuff from the brush onto the paper. But you don't have to use a uh, fine art material. You can just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get you a can of paint. Right, uh, a lot of my stuff I end up using just stuff straight from Lowe's or whatever. You know, I get the little acrylic tubs. I mean, you get a ton of paint for a cheap amount of money, like five bucks, and get your whole little you know can of paint. Uh, when if you get acrylics from the art store, uh, you're really gonna be paying a ton of money and pay like 10, 15 bucks for a little tube. You know, so. Always look out for deal, deals when you go to the art store. That's the first place I tend to go unless I, I know exactly what I'm getting. But if I'm just going in there to look for deals or I, I got an idea of something I might want to do, I'll just go to the art store and see whatever they have on discount. You know, They always have discount areas and uh, you can find some good stuff. They're like, oh, you know, we got to get rid of this stuff because we got new stuff coming in. Like, boom, you know, you can get a $10 tube of paint for like two or three bucks. Uh, it works just fine. You know, I, I got tubes of paint that I'm still painting out of uh, that I've had for 20 years plus. I like this tube right here, this paint that I'm using here. This is 20-year-old acrylic paint, I believe. Uh, actually, it's more like 15, might be 15-year-old now that I'm thinking about it. I got this in Arizona when I first moved there, 2005. And I got it on discount. So they were getting rid of it because they thought it was old. So there you go. But it's a nice color. Real nice color. I was really happy with this. And I noticed that I showed this whole doing all the pages. I probably just wanted y'all to see exactly what is done on all the different pages here. Uh, that's why I'm showing you every single page of the book. But we're almost done with them. And uh, then I'll probably come on in and uh, tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing. And I'll uh, show off the books, or show off the, the pages that we have once they're dry. But again, just want to reiterate, have fun, do whatever you want. You know, this isn't about coming out with the perfect ink page or whatever, you know, if we're doing comic books or whatever. I mean, we're just doing a storybook. Uh, it's not necessarily comics based, uh, but this process can be used in anything. Comics, uh, illustration, storybooks, children's books, whatever. You know, it's you're just making books. Just think of it that way. You're making a book and you're making imagery that is interesting to you, but at the same time you're exploring. Always explore. Always have fun. That's the big thing. Just explore, 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 and see where you end up. Because you learn a lot from exploring. You really, really do. I'm, um, I'm going to say that exploration is probably, <laughs> there we go. Exploration is 70%. Uh, reading and seeing how other people do it is 70%. And uh, knowing exactly what you're doing is 70%. Does that equal up to 100 it don't matter if it equals up to 100. Heck with it. <laughs> it's all important, you know. You just got to take these little bits and just add them all together and do whatever, 
you know, and, and come together and just do something. But don't only do one thing. If you're constantly just exploring one thing, then it gets tiresome and you only get good at one thing. I mean, explore and try all different types of stuff because who knows what you're good at, right? You think you might be good at one thing, but then you might find out that you're really, really good at something else that you didn't even know anything about. So that's why you always want to try different stuff. And something that I've always, uh, I've been doing since probably college is I would find art stuff that was done a certain way, but I didn't know those ways. So I would try and duplicate them uh, doing techniques that I knew, right? Like people were making artwork from the computer and I really liked the way it looked, but I didn't know how to do the computer art at that time. So I just used what I had and tried to duplicate it. And uh, doing things like that, where it's like one type of art style, but using a different art style to, to do it, you can learn a lot by doing that sort of stuff. As you've been watching, you've been seeing me actually stirring the pot, as it were. I was getting all these papers kind of uh, distressed, and I was throwing some paint in and splashing paint all over them. And uh, just kind of getting them ready to make a handmade book, you know, because that's what we're doing here. We're going to make a handmade book. And myself, personally, I like to just distress the paper and get it all worked up before you actually get started on it. I find that it's easier to make marks on paper if it's not blank. Like, if it's already messed up and got blotches and paint all over it, then it's easy to just kind of dig into it and do something with it. Plus, it kind of gives you a... a a starting point that's really random where it's like okay I can work with this I can do something with it so that's really what I wanted to show you here so these are the pages after they've uh, dried and uh, they're ready to kind of get going and start working on so I just wanted to kind of look at that big old thick stack of papers there not sure how many are here maybe 20 something pages but it's just kind of a, a nice starting point I'll actually kind of flip through some of these and kind of show you what I'm talking about, right? Look at there. It's just kind of fun and exciting to have this as like your starting point to do some pieces, right? There you go. And also, it's all the same color, so each page already has a starting point that kind of links it and blends it all together, right? So these are gonna be a lot of fun. A lot of fun and it doesn't matter you know which sides which you know we're gonna work on both sides so it, it doesn't really matter too much or you might not want to work on both sides so you might just want to pick the side that you like the best but for me I just like working on both sides I like the whole piece to be something you know then it's not like a faux piece you know just one on the front because this is a book and a book you have stuff on both pages so in both sides of a piece of paper so that is uh, what we're actually going to do. We, we want it to look like a real book, so we're going to do that. We're going to work on both sides. Anyway, this is just the starting point. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to work on each piece. We're going to do maybe a piece a day, just working on it and uh, seeing where we get to. And, uh, and then at the end of about a month, we'll have a book that we can put together. We can sew it up. You know, I'll show you how you can sew it up and actually uh, get something really cool out of this. I got my threads over here. I got all different types of threads, different colors. We got um, natural, it's kind of like a beige. Got blue, got black, got red, and got white. So we got a bunch of colors to choose from. For this one, we might want to do something that kind of stands out, you know. All these are brownish kind of colors. Maybe I want to put a blue binding on it, you know, sew it up with some blue thread. And then, by the way, these are wax threads. Waxed is always uh, what you use for binding books. It works a little better. You can use regular thread, but waxed, wax thread works the best. And for this, since it's going to be all kind of crazy and all over the place, it doesn't really kind of matter. It's just, you know... I, I just would use the wax thread. It'll uh, it'll last a lot longer. So, 
So anyway, there you go. Now it's time to actually get in there and start working on the individual pages. So let's see what that's all about. If you like what you're seeing here, give us a like, share, subscribe. Also go on over to the skitscomic.com website. All videos show up there a week before they ever hit YouTube. While you're there, pick you up a comic book, print, or go ahead and uh, get you an original piece of art. Lastly, go over to Indiegogo.com and sign up for the book that you're actually watching being made right now. Thank you and have a great day.